Hey, welcome back to the homestead. Today, it's the middle of November, and we're gonna take a tour through the orchard after this first season of growth. Um, so here in the fall, we're gonna take a tour and see where these things are at. Let's check it out. So this is the first, I guess you could say, like year of growth or season of growth. These were all planted in January, and we're just gonna go through and see where they're at real quick. So this is the uh, Santa Barbara peach, and it did okay after it came out of dormancy, but uh, it didn't get too huge. Um, I didn't really do anything to this since then, so I probably could have benefited from a little summer pruning to stimulate some more growth, but overall it's all right. And next we have the mid pride peach, and this one's like basically dormant now. There was a heavy winds and kind of a storm last weekend, um, and it knocked most of the leaves off some of these. Um, but this one did good too. Nice growth after it came out of dormancy. Um, and yeah, I wish I would have done this video a couple weeks ago so you could have seen all the foliage, but I guess better late than never. And this is the August pride peach, so this is the uh, the real late, oh no wait, no sorry, this is the May Pride peach, so this is the mid-season peach, and this one did great. Um, got really nice growth, and I like the way the growth came out. Um, so yeah, that's about dormant now. Here's the late season peach, this is the August Pride peach. Tiny little bit of green left, but yeah, it's mostly gone dormant. Um, so most of these that you've seen so far, didn't really get any summer pruning. Um, I didn't really hardly do any summer pruning overall. I did a little here and there just to even things out. This is now the uh, apricots. This is a gold kissed apricot and this one has great growth. There's some new growth coming off. I did prune this just to even it out because it was a little lopsided. You can see that shoot coming off huge too because that's where it was pruned um, in the summer. I did some pruning around uh, mid to late September, so it was actually pretty late. I should have done it earlier, but um, didn't, so that's what we did. Um, next is Katie Apricot. This is one's about dormant. Um, everything we've seen so far, these are all done really good. Tropic Gold Apricot, this one did great. It's branching out. It has nice new growth over here because I gave this one a little more pruning than the other ones you've seen um, in the summer. Summer pruning I just do to uh, even things out if there's too much growth on one side and to kind of stimulate some new growth. All right, and we're gonna turn around and go to the 20th century Asian pear. Um, this one was one that had a tall uh, central, like a center branch that was like five, six feet tall when we first got it and we cut it down to like 30 inches or 36 inches or so. So this didn't have a huge growth season. I probably should have uh, pruned it again like midsummer to stimulate some more. Um, but this one's small, so we'll see what happens. It does, the trunk seems pretty nice and sturdy, but overall healthy. And then next we have the burgundy plum. This thing um, really got hammered uh, by um, uh, aphids. Ants farmed the aphids on this one. So this thing had a hard season, but it is still okay. Um, and you can see a flower there. And uh, what I come up with is that some of these things flower after stress. So I don't think it was supposed to flower that time, but it did anyways. Next, we've got the cherries, and this is the Royal Lee cherry. And this one did really good. The cherries overall did great. They didn't get any pest damage. Um, this one, I don't think I did any summer pruning on it at all. Um, but these, these grow great and they grew tall. So that is your Royal Lee cherry. And then this is the mini Royal cherry. And this one grew super tall seven or eight feet, just shot up after winter. Um, so this one I did prune towards the end, but you know, like I said, I think I pruned a little too late in the summer, but that's some new growth that came off after pruning. From here, where I, my finger's at, it was another foot, foot and a half. Um, so I took off like the tallest ones, one, two, three, and four, um, and I think maybe that one, but. Uh, these didn't really get too much growth after it. it did send up a new shoot here, but 
yeah, kind of a mistake on my part, trimming them too late. Uh, pruning them too late in the summer, but it's all right. All right, so next is the Panamint Nectarine. Uh, this one did okay overall. It did get some of the uh, aphid and ants all over it, um, but the damage wasn't too bad. I was able to stop it in time. And yeah, I didn't really touch this one on summer pruning. Um, pretty much left this alone. Then we got the Desert Delight Nectarine. Um, Desert Delight Nectarine, this one did good overall. It's tall, you can see it is like seven, maybe seven and a half feet. Lots of great green growth on there. Um, trunk looks solid, so overall this one did really good. This one did get hit with the aphids and ants a lot, but it turned out okay as it was save it and stop them. Um, and we're gonna keep going to our Arctic Star White Nectarine. This one got hit hard by the uh, pests, the aphids and the ants, but you know I think it's okay. There's some new growth because I had to trim off some of the damage by the aphids and ants. Um, but I've been spraying these with this fruit tree spray. Um, but one thing is if you see ants on your trees, what I do is put out ant baits immediately. You need to stop the ants in their tracks. So put baits down at the base and uh, that will kill out the ant colony. But you can also put something called tanglefoot, which we have, we just never got around to putting it on. We really needed to do that. And you put tanglefoot down at the trunk and it keeps them from the ants from being able to go up. The ants go up with aphids and they set them up on the end of the tips of the new growth. And then they farm the aphids for their milk or something like that. So. This is the uh, nectarine. Next, we're going over to the poor guy who got just hammered. This is the methley plum. And it actually looks better now than it did probably a few weeks ago. There's nice green growth, you can see. But uh, overall, this thing got really hammered by the ant aphid combo. And you can see uh, if it will focus on that, that's the kind of damage it does it makes the the growth yeah they're on there now dang it it messes up the new growth basically so i have to go back hit this one with the spray again because i thought they were gone but they're not and i have to put another ant bait but so basically the ants just love on focus the ants just love this tree and they really did a number on it but i think it's going to be okay and the root system still seems strong. Um, and it got a lot of that green growth back here in the fall, but the lesson on this was keep a very close eye. Once you find out that there's ants and the aphids in there, keep a very, very close eye. And look, that's some more of the damage they did. If this thing will focus, focus. Yeah, they just getting there. There's some healthy growth, looks great. All right, next we are going over to our Fuji apple. This one stayed pretty small. The apple trees, uh, let's see. Some of these that got taken real small didn't seem to go crazy once they woke up, like the peaches and uh, apricots and nectarines did, but I like this one overall. It doesn't have the strongest root system. It's decent, but some of these didn't end up getting the strongest root systems. There's some new growth because I chopped a few back and, um, for some summer pruning. Next is the gala apple. Now this one is a sad story here. What happened is the line from the gray water that comes to this one, it got plugged with some gunk in the hottest week of the summer. And I didn't check it for a few days, literally just like one or two days. And I came down and all of the leaves had turned crispy and then they turned brown. Um, and this one had such nice growth. It was really beautiful before it lost all the leaves. So we stripped those leaves down and uh, kept watering it. And I think it's okay that the branches aren't super brittle or anything, but then it had a windstorm and the windstorm knocked this thing over. Um, the same wind that took most of the leaves off the other trees knocked this thing over. So I had to uh, restake it there. So it's temporarily got a stake in there and watered it really good. And you know, it does have, this green 
uh, survived. I, I think some of it might have came after it lost all its brown. But hopefully this thing will go dormant and then wake back up at the end, um, at the next season, you know, as spring. All right, and then we're over to the Golden Dorset Apple. Um, this one's done okay, but the roots aren't too happy. Uh, it doesn't have like a super strong root system. Um, and it's a little uneven too, so you can see this is here and there's not one off the other, but I'm sure that'll even out in the next spring growth. Then the last two are the almonds. So this almond's dead. It never came out of dormancy. So really, it's not a 20 yard, 20 tree orchard, it's a 19 tree orchard, but for now we're calling it 20. But this thing never came out of dormancy, so it's done. Um, but then its sister, same thing, is our all-in-one almonds. This did, it came out of dormancy and it had great growth and it had a you know beautiful foliage and then it's starting to kind of go dormant now. Um, you can see most of these have nothing on them, but this came out and grew really nice. So we have one slot here for another tree, at least one, we can fit more behind here, but I'm not sure, we're not gonna rush and fill that space, but this will be replaced by an aprium. And then we may end up getting one more almond at some point. I'm gonna do some more research, to decide if I want two almonds. I also forgot to show you guys, I mentioned that I was able to get this whole area mulched down with some uh, wood chips. So hopefully this will keep woods, uh, weeds down as we get rain into the winter and spring. Um, so it's really nice and a lot more aesthetic now with the mulch down. Um, all right, so that'll wrap this video up. Thanks for checking it out. We'll check back into the orchard uh, after winter when it's time to do the uh, winter pruning. And um, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and give us a big thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.